I will open this meeting of the Transportation Public Works. This was an adjourned meeting from the previous meeting on the matter of the Southwest LRT transit line approval uh, from the city of Minneapolis and other uh, supporting actions from the city. Um, we have the one item before us. It has several components to it. Um, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Director, do we have um, any further presentations? I know we've had two so far. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, the staff does not have any further presentations. And so at this point, uh, we would just ask if uh, the, we have uh, four staff recommendations, uh, A, B, C, and D. Uh, I guess we would ask that items B and C be referred to the special uh, uh, special committee meeting or a special uh, council meeting this morning and that items A and D be referred to the full council on Friday. Uh, noted and I will also be moving uh, with the item uh, one with the four subsections with two staff directions that uh, committee members you have before you. Um, th the first is a direction from Bender, Palmasano and Gordon, council members Bender, Palmasano and Gordon. And then the other is a uh, um, draft draft direction from myself and uh, Council Vice President Glidden. Um, I will note that we are a, um, a quorum of the committee. And uh, I'm myself, I'm Kevin Reich, I'm chairing the committee. I'm joined by Council Members uh, Yang, um, Bender, Gordon, Palmasano, and Glidden. Uh, we also have um, Council Member um, <laughs> Goodman, <laughs> Lisa, uh, here, here with us as well. Um, so we have the items before us. The item is Southwest um, Light Rail Transit um, LRT Quarter Memorandum of Understanding and Missile Approval for the plans. The subcomponents are authorized proper city officials to enter into the execute the Memorandum of Understanding between the City of Minneapolis and the Metropolitan Council on the proposed redesign of the portion of the Southwest LRT project. Authorize proper city officials to enter into and execute a memorandum of understanding between the city and the Metropolitan Council on the preservation of Kenilworth Quarter in the public ownership and control. Authorize proper city officials to enter into and execute a memorandum of understanding between the city and the Hennepin County Regional Railroad Authority, otherwise known as HICRA, uh, regarding the Southwest LRT project. And final action is to approve the resolution uh, approving the physical design component and the preliminary design plans for the Southwest Quarter Light Rail project that were submitted to the city of Met, uh, by the Metropolitan Council on July 10, 2014, in order to fulfill the requirements of the Minnesota Statute Section 473-3994, Subdivision 3. Um, I will uh, open this up for discussion among committee members and others. Uh, we can take uh, some conversation and comment regarding the staff directions as necessary following that. Oh, and we are I'll now be joined by Council Member Fry. Uh, Council Member Glidden. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, maybe just to kind of start things, I might want to ask, did you want to move these uh, items separately so we can vote on 1A, uh, 1B, 1C, and 1D, or did you want us to vote as a package? I, that... I certainly will take a request to separate. Okay, well, I might go ahead then, and uh, just for the um, uh, seriousness of, of each vote, um, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move 1A, mm -hmm. and uh, to start discussion on this uh, item. This is an item that we would then vote on uh, as a committee, and it will be referred to the full council meeting on Friday. Um, this again is the item that is the um, memorandum of, of understanding between the City of Minneapolis and Metropolitan Council on uh, redesign of a portion of the Southwest Light Rail. I think um, this was uh, a very critical uh, item in the sense that um, um, there was some agreement about um, uh, the quality of uh, the necessary quality of that redesign, especially as it uh, touches the Kenilworth corridor, and um, uh, that this is uh, an, an area that um, is in a park-like setting, 
we want to ensure that um, that setting is not just preserved but um, elevated to ensure it still maintains that park-like setting to the extent possible with um, these uh, new rail elements introduced into that setting. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this item to start the conversation. Um, any further questions or comments? Um, I, I will uh, just... Um, I will first echo uh, Council Member Glidden's comments. Um, not only is there that provision and desire to get the enhanced design, there's a methodology by which we would ensure that through a separate uh, design component, uh, professionally selected, selected by the different parties, a professional third party group to elevate those designs and ensure that we get that quality um, that's desired. Um, Council Member Yang, no, he yields. Any further discussion? Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to note that um, in addition to the importance of putting back as much as possible that the quality of that space, that this included some really important bicycle and pedestrian connections. We don't have park and rides in the city, which is the right thing, you know, the right choice, but that means that people rely largely on biking, walking, and transit to connect to these stations. So I really appreciate all of the work that went into our team that was um, made sure that that was included in this memorandum of understanding. Uh, thank you. And then just to further reinforce that notion about bike paths, uh, here in the city of Minneapolis, we would consider any deviation from the current bike path condition a significant change to the project. We take our, all our modes seriously, and that one no less than others. Uh, any further comment, uh, questions? We have a motion uh, before us from uh, Glidden to approve it. All in favor say aye. 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 Dissenting name. That item forward is forwarded to the full council. Uh, we will continue to take these up uh, in a serial fashion. We now have uh, item B. I will move item B, authorize proper city officials to enter into and execute the memorandum understanding regarding the um, preservation of the corridor. Um, and we have Councilman Yang. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it, it's my understanding that we're going to have a special meeting on items B and C, so would it be appropriate to move both items to the special meeting and not uh, have to vote in this committee for those two items? Um, I, I, would, I take that suggestion as friendly and, 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 and wise, and so um, I will revise my motion and make it a combined motion for B and C. Any questions or conversation on those two items? Uh, seeing none, all in favor of forwarding B and C, say aye. 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 Dissenting nay. Those will forward to the special meeting. Um, item D, approve resolution approving the physical design component of the preliminary design plans for the uh, Southwest LRT corridor project and that was submitted by the Met Council on July 10th. Um, I will move that and open for questions and comments. Council Marie Yang. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with regards to this item, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read all this stuff, and I, I'm thinking that's the item in which um, the question of municip municipal consent is um, kind of the underlying theme there. And, you know, I, I will say this, that um, I, I've been concerned with regards to not having the SDEIS uh, and not having a chance to review that before we make this decision. And, um, you know, how can I say this? Um, part of me feels like maybe that's a part of the law, but I mean, I haven't gotten a clear answer, and maybe I'd love to hear uh, from our city attorney or somebody else as to whether that's a requirement. Um, you know, I certainly understand that the last time we were here, uh, I asked a question of, I believe it was Mr. Alexander, and he um, expressed, you know, his thoughts on it, but I mean, I think from our perspective as a city, I mean, we'd, it'd be nice to hear um, what we think of it, and uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, a lot of folks in the community have uh, brought these up and these questions up. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's delaying the inevitable, but I mean, I certainly would like to just, you know, get a sense of, you know, where we're at on that just so that uh, we can move together as a community with regards to this specific issue. So uh, thank you, Council Member. Uh, we do have the staff direction uh, by Bender, Palmasan, and Gordon that will uh, uh, speak to that. Uh, you can review that, but since you asked for legal clarification from our city attorney, I will yield the floor. Uh, Mr. Chair and Council Member Yang, the one thing that we do know is that there is a deadline for this uh, council to vote on the issue of municipal consent. Um, whether or not environmental review is required prior to uh, consent 
is an issue that may well ultimately be resolved by the courts. And Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can clarify a bit um, why we brought forward this staff direction. Um, I think as the committee members all know, we cannot vote yes with conditions. We have to either vote yes or no on the complete package that is before us. And I share Councilmember Yang's concern and frustration with not having a completed SDEIS available to us before we vote, which I think is clearly at least the intent of the law, um, not being an attorney myself. Um, and I, I know, so the, this staff direction, the intention here is to make this very clear that the city expects that if there is anything that comes out of the SDEIS process at any time that is information regarding any impact to the quality of our lake, including the groundwater, that our staff in the city attorney's office and public works would be directed to bring forward to us very serious action, including legal action that would stop the Southwest Light Rail train in order to protect our environmental assets. And I think this is as strong as we, a statement that as we can make, um, given the parameters of the vote that we have before us. Thank you. Councilmember Gordon. Just on the staff direction, I, I think it's a great, uh, a great addition. I know one of the concerns is with the uh, draft environmental impact statement. I don't think uh, it replaces having that finished and before us, of course, but at least it gives us a precaution. So I'm certainly uh, um, going to vote for that and appreciate, um, appreciate it being there. Uh, thank you for that. And, and further clarification, uh, just procedurally, there would be a, a chance for us to comment on the um, SDIS once it's created. And so this, these uh, reports and actions will be uh, structured around that. So it's formal, it's going to happen, it will be before us, and we will have a chance to comment, re review and comment. Um, any further discussion, questions? Councilmember Gordon. Are we voting on the staff direction? Mm. No, we just were at some conversation. So I'd like to comment then on the uh, municipal consent item and just kind of share with you how conflicted that I am and that I am reaching the conclusion that I do not want this to uh, leave the committee with a unanimous committee recommendation. I think it's really important that um, the, the, the seriousness and the difficulty and the, uh, the conflicts that we're probably all feeling about this issue are reflected in the committee decision. I haven't really heard much of the discussion to know how everyone is voting on the committee, but I do suspect that this will move forward with a recommendation. And um, I'm, uh, and you can try to talk me out of this, but I'm thinking of voting no so that it doesn't get that unanimous recommendation. And there's a couple big issues, and one of them is the environmental impact statement. I have to admit that um, I do think this is a, a, a decent alignment, and there's a lot of things about the Southwest LRT and what's coming forward that I um, think is very advantageous to us. I think we need to build out our system. I think we need to build it out now. And I will confess that if I thought I was the swing vote between a yes and a no, it would be a different kind of thinking that I'd put into this, but I'm, I don't think that I am. Um, I actually think that going down an old rail corridor makes a lot of sense for light rail. I saw some decisions that were made with the Hiawatha line that I thought were abominable. There were, um, we ended up moving a uh, freeway and tearing out a neighborhood and, and a bunch of park space. I also have seen and lived um, what, it, what it's like to try to put a light rail line down a busy major um, auto truck route on University Avenue. Um, I think that worked out a little better. There wasn't as much taking of property, but what we have is a very slow train. So this is, you know, looking at the rail corridor makes a lot of sense to me, and I think there's a lot of benefits. But I think what we're getting is kind of an incomplete um, product, and we're also getting a different, uh, a different product than what um, we made commitments for when we agreed to this alignment. Um, it's significant that the freight has not been relocated when we, it was, it had to be crystal clear to everybody that that was the expectation and that was absolutely what the city of Minneapolis wanted to see the freight move as part of this um, alignment decision. It hasn't been done. I'm also still concerned about um, the, uh, uh, the, the the, the possibility that our, our bike infrastructure that we've built there and the, and the bike highway ma, um, might not exist. And I wanted to be really clear that we're watching that. That's critically important. Um, I don't want to see that changed. And then there's the issue of, of what about the impacts on the lakes and the water and the environmental um, impact statement that isn't 
done yet, and it seems like it, um, we really need and should have all that work done and all that information done in before us before we're expected to give municipal consent. And so um, unless you can convince me otherwise and want to take some time, I intend to vote um, no as this moves forward today, and we'll see about Friday. Thank you. Councilmember Bender? Oh, sorry, uh, Councilmember Goodman. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. You cannot even imagine how difficult it is for me to sit here quietly and listen to the debate of a committee that I don't serve on. Uh, but I might not have an opportunity today in the council meeting to speak to this issue of the DEIS, and so I'm asking my colleagues' permission just to comment on it now. I'll have plenty to say on Friday, um, but on, the, on, on municipal consent. Um, six of you sat up here and said we will not agree to co-location not two years ago. We said no way on co-location, we won't do it, we'll agree to this alignment, but we will not agree to co-location. And now what we have in front of us is tremendous pressure by every outside government entity in the state of Minnesota, starting at the governor's office, moving to the Met Council unelected, moving to Hennepin County, which screwed this up so bad and handed it to the Met Council to try to fix. Uh, follow, we had the legislature bashing us and trying to withhold money from us from state bonding, organized labor, the business community, equity activists, I can go on and on. I understand the pressure and I feel for those of you that have a hard time making a decision but if we make a decision today without a DEIS we'll be further along the train line what are you gonna do if they come back and say you know what you guys are right <laughs> building a shallow tunnel with this very odd construction method that digs down it's gonna dewater the lakes and they're gonna come back to us and say well then we need to co-locate a grade and then you know those townhomes and those houses and that grain elevator those might have to go too and all those same organizations suburban um, mayors, suburban city councils, suburban legislators, the governor's office, the Hennepin County, the Met Council, the business community, organized labor and equity activists are going to be saying you're too far along now to say no. This is my concern. I was the canary in the minefield on this co-location issue and I want to be noted as being the canary in the minefield right now. We do not have a completed environmental review. We have no business picking this alignment without it. And Interestingly enough, and I, 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 without, with all due respect to the city attorney, if she felt super strongly that we were on great legal footing, she would have issued a legal opinion, and she did not. So let that be a warning to you. When you vote for this, you could be voting for something much worse down the line during your tenure here. Thank you, Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate and share Councilmember Goodman's frustration. I think the city has been put in a very difficult position here today. And as someone who started my career and my entire career has been as a transit advocate, um, I feel it's so important for us to build out a regional transit system. We are building a regional transit system that serves suburban commuters over urban neighborhoods. That is just a fact. And we can blame the suburb, the Bush era formulas for that, but that's really not the case because we've made decisions since those formulas changed that have continued that pattern. Um, I still think that's a better transit system than having no regional transit system at all. Um, so I'll be supporting this today. Um, but I think it is critically important, not just for the city of Minneapolis, but for our region that we build the local transit connections that serve urban neighborhoods that this transit system is passing by. And we do not have the strength of a commitment from the state, from our regional partners to build that system that, that I wish we had uh, as we voted today. I, I appreciated the Hennepin County vote last week to acknowledge the Nicollet Central Streetcar. I wish we had state funding in place that would enable us to build out our local systems. I wish we had a regional transportation policy plan adopted by the Metropolitan Council that that supported our streetcar system, our local transit system, and we do not have those things in place today. Um, I'll be working with my colleagues to continue to advocate for those as the city has done in the past up until this time. If I thought voting today no on this train, which the Board 10 Council member did vote no on the local, the LPA uh, years ago when that came forward, um, you know, I would. I would vote no today if I thought the train would come through Uptown in a reasonable time frame in the future, but I don't think that's the case. Um, so again, I share the frustration of my colleague, but I, I think that this is an important system for the region. Uh, so here we are, and I think um, we have to do the best we can. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Councilmember Gordon? Are you, oh, you're good. Bender? Councilmember Goodman, any further comment? Um, oh, Madam Mayor. 
Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. And procedurally, I don't know if you are at the point of voting on a staff direction regarding the uh, SDEIS, but um, I think it is, it is the moment for me to say I, I thank um, Councilmember Bender, um, uh, Gordon Palmasano, everybody for their work um, on this question, and particularly Councilmember Bender. We've been working with her office um, on this, and I do support it. Um, I don't think I can add much beyond what Councilmember Bender just said, but I did want to voice my support for the work here and my appreciation that it has come forward. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Any further comments? And what we have before us is um, item 1D, uh, and this is to forward it to uh, the council meeting on Friday. Um, any further comments? Seeing none. What's that? Including the two staff. No, that'll be separate. Um, seeing no comment, all those in favor of, of forwarding item 1D, say aye. 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 Dissenting? Nay. We have three, uh, four, four eyes and two nays that will move forward to full council conversation and, and um, subject to an up and down vote. Um, we now have two staff directions. The first staff direction has been uh, referenced and discussed. Um, it's the one that was authored by Bender, Palmasano, and Gordon. I will move that forward since we've already discussed it. If there's any further comments, entertain those now. Any questions for clarification? Councilmember Glidden followed by Councilmember Yang. Thank you. I, I just wanted to um, thank the council members for bringing forth this um, staff direction, um, which I think is a strong statement on the SDIS. Um, uh, I, I agree we have really been put in kind of an untenable position here, but um, we are in a required time frame for, uh, that we didn't start this clock for voting on municipal consent. And uh, for us not to vote, um, and again, we don't have that uh, ability to vote uh, yes with conditions. Um, it is yes or no. Um, I do think this is um, a helpful and appropriate uh, staff direction, one that I fully support. So thank you very much. Councilor Rie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if I may, I'd like to be added onto this uh, resolution. Um, secondly, you know, without the SDEIS, I mean, this is probably the closest we can get to uh, making clear um, our intent. And so I fully support this resolution. Thank you for the comment. You will be added as an author. Clerk is nodding yes. Uh, any further questions, clarifications, comments? Seeing none on the staff direction um, before us, all in favor say aye. Aye. Dissenting nay. That carries. Uh, the, the other uh, staff direction, um, is, is as follows, as part of the deliberation over Southwest LRT, citizens of Minneapolis, including a broad range of community, neighborhood, and advocacy organizations, have put forward ideas to promote equity through and around improved transit service, and leaders from those organizations have met the city leaders to advance those ideas. Some of those equity concerns and ideas are outlined um, at www.peopletransit.org and www.equitycc for S Southwest LRT, uh, you can read the full uh, addresses on online. Um, and so in addition to that, the Intergovernmental Relations Department is directed to convene appropriate staff from Public Works, Community Plan and Economic Development, Civil Rights, City Coordinator, Mayor's Office, and the City Council offices to complete development of a written response to the City to these equity concerns and ideas and to report back to the Transportation Public Works Committee by September 9th, 2014. Um, so that is the um, action before us, the direction before us. Uh, Councilmember Glidden. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I just have a, a small uh, correction. I wanted to change the word citizens in the first line to residents, if we could please. Um, and uh, and then I just wanted to say this, the staff direction is really a formalization of some work that is already happening with um, staff in the city in, uh, that have been uh, working and communicating with our governmental partners as well as with a broad range of, of residents and, and groups that have raised uh, very appropriate concerns, many of which that the, the city very strongly agrees with. And I, I might just want to echo uh, Councilmember Bender's uh, comments that, uh, again, Southwest Light Rail, as with other rail lines, um, is a spine. 
And for this to work properly to serve Minneapolis, we need to make sure that um, uh, connections exist, that they are frequent, that they um, um, are connected to other ways that the system reaches into more dense areas of Minneapolis, um, and uh, that the amenities that uh, serve residents using um, uh, our transit service are appropriate. And uh, so this covers a, a number of areas, and, um, and we will be responding uh, more formally to the community and to our community partners. Thank you. Councilmember Yang? No. Um, yeah, I will further, further comment that um, a lot of work um, has happened around these issues and a lot of formal componentry um, has been developed by staff and we will be putting it all together um, in an appropriate fashion. I also will note that this isn't just a, a response to uh, concerns, it's also a response to expectations expectations that were raised by the Met Council, the project uh, governing body, that said this would be an equity train. Uh, that, that phrase was used over and over again. We're just doing our part as the municipal representatives of the citizens that it lives up to that promise to the best that it can. And, and I will also reinforce that this is work, ongoing work moving forward and that the document that will be formalized and put before the committee uh, at a subsequent meeting uh, will be uh, a statement of our work moving forward to make those connections and to make, uh, as Councilmember Glidden so well put, uh, make the most of this line and make it live up to its promise. Um, any further comments? Uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate your comments about um, the expectations that have been raised by the Met Council about this train and um, couldn't agree with you more that those expectations have been raised. Um, they're difficult expectations to meet, uh, but it is now on the Met Council uh, as, the, as the transit governing body uh, to make good on that. Um, the response on, and, and the response on equity from the Met Council um, has been disappointing at best. Um, I need to be clear where I stand on this. Uh, they've had made many agreements to process, and they've made no agreements to outcome thus far in what they have put out there. Um, you know, that's characterized some of the work we've been doing with the Met Council recently, a deep commitment to outcome and, and not a deep commitment to, uh, a I'm sorry, a deep commitment to process and not a deep commitment to outcome. Uh, with the municipal consent issues and the issues about the line itself, we do have agreements that uh, you all have been voting on, and that's good. Uh, challenging though those agreements might be. Um, but we've gotten nothing, nothing of substance from the Met Council about equity that they weren't planning on doing anyway. So I appreciate very much this staff direction uh, because we need to make sure we as a city are sending the strongest possible message to the Met Council about what our, what our expectations are, what we as a city want, what our residents want regarding equity so that they can make good um, on their proposal and their proposition that this is a train that will bring great equity. The decisions that will make that true or not have yet to be made, and those are decisions that need to be made by the Met Council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, any further questions or comments before the staff direction we have before you? Um, that, that has been moved. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Dissenting name, that carries. Um, Seeing no other business before us, um, we have the items uh, have been moved and, and forwarded to the appropriate um, uh, meetings. We have a special meeting uh, subsequent to this uh, of the full council, and the items uh, 1A and uh, no B and C will be acted on, and then items A, uh, 1A and 1D will be acted on at the full regular meeting of the council. Um, that is the process before us, and with that, we are adjourned.